Merry Christmas, everyone. Looks like there's something under the tree. I wonder what's inside. Wow, it's a new Curtis Connor video. <laughs> here you go. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, what's up? How's it going? And if you're coming back, what's up? How's it going? It's very good to see you again. I hope you're doing well. You see what happens when you subscribe to my channel? You get an extra greeting at the beginning of every single one of my videos. So press the subscribe button for an extra greeting. Folks, it's the most wonderful time of the year. The winter time. It's so fun. There's dirty slush everywhere. And you, you have to buy winter tires. And oh, when you walk outside for too long, uh, the eye juice in your eye freezes. <laughs> Mm, I love it. Yeah, winter sucks, dude. I fucking hate the winter time. I'm not a fan at all. The only good thing about the winter is Christmas, obviously, right? I love Christmas. I love celebrating Christmas. It's so much fun. Um, I'm not like religious or anything, so I don't really celebrate it to like, you know, commemorate Jesus's B-Day. That's not why we celebrate it. You know, I just like hanging out with my family um, and watching Christmas movies. Dude, do I ever love Christmas movies? Yes, the answer is yes. I fucking love Christmas movies so much, just so much. Two of my top five favorite movies of all time are Christmas movies, okay? And that's not a coincidence. What two movies, you ask? Good question. Jingle All the Way and Home Alone 2, obviously. Okay, Christmas movies fucking slap. Jack Frost gets an honorable mention. But seriously, there's something so amazing about Christmas movies when they're done right. <laughs> like that one scene in Home Alone 2 when Marv gets electrocuted and he turns into a skeleton, Wow. Dude, I fucking lose my mind every time I see that scene. It's so funny. Or in Jingle All the Way when Howard is like, put, put that, that cookie, cookie down, down now. now. Fucking, for every like good Christmas movie, I feel like there's like 30 bad ones. And I'm sure you're all aware of several bad Christmas movies. Um, I made a video last year about a Christmas movie. Christian Mingle is the movie. Um, but I didn't even know it was a, a Christmas movie until they re-released it as Christmas Mingle. Uh... Hey guys, if you're gonna change the name of the movie, you better fucking release a, a Christmas-themed dating website to go along with it. You, you sinners, you absolute sinners. Winner, winner, chicken, sinner. Sinner? I hardly know her. Okay. Jesus Christ. So the movie we're gonna be talking about today is called Too Cool for Christmas. Let's find out what the movie's about. 16-year-old Lindsay decides to give Santa Claus an extreme makeover. That's it. <laughs> Usually synopsis is sy synops synopsises? Synopses? Synopses. Yeah! Usually synopses. Uh, when they explain a movie, it's like, they tell, they say the goal, like what, what the main character's goal is, but here's something that's stopping them from reaching that goal, right? Because, you know, good story is just good conflict, but this one's like, Santa gets a makeover, and it's kind of cool. <laughs> but I, I found a better synopsis, which reads, Lindsay thinks she is too cool to be with her family on Christmas. When she ends up delivering presents with Santa himself, she finds out what Christmas really means. So... Grab a big plate of cookies, a big old glass of milk, and let's make fun of this stupid movie. <laughs> the movie starts off with Lindsay sleeping in her bed on Christmas morning. Classic teen, you know, always sleeping in their bed on Christmas morning. And then her little sister wakes her up and they go downstairs to open some prezzies. And she's so happy, she gets that Chanel bag she's always been wanting, but uh-oh. At last we are together. It's fake. You know it's gonna be a good movie when they add in a bunch of silly sound effects that don't need to be there at all. Okay, saying that out loud, I kind of just realized that that's what my videos are. <laughs> just me adding a bunch of sound effects that don't need to be there. But it's different though, okay? I'm not a movie. My life is. But I'm not. Imagine a YouTuber, like, editing major motion pictures. Oh my god, he on X Games mode. Uh. How did you do that? Do you really think you have a chance against us, Mr. Cowboy? 
Yippee-ki-yay, motherfucker. <laughs> So it gets all like distorted and weird and like the parents keep laughing a bunch and we find out that this whole Christmas scene was only just a dream. And it's a scary dream to her because she's freaking out about a fake bag. So that's like her, her character trait. She's like materialistic and like selfish and stuff. That's like a common theme that she tries to like overcome in this whole movie. Then we get the title screen and they play a wicked cool song that I'm pretty sure they wrote for this movie. Next time someone hands me the aux cord, bro. Cool Don't get ready to turn up to too cool for Christmas, bro. <laughs> so she picks up her best pal Paige on the way to school, and they and this is when we find out pretty major plot point. Um, so they have this big plan to go on a fun ski trip on Christmas Day, but Lindsay hasn't told her parents yet. <laughs> have you told them yet? No. Uh oh. <laughs> Looks like she's in for a mountain of trouble. Boo. Boo! Oh, right. boo! Yeah. Fuck you! You suck! Okay. Stinky, you little okay. boy! Okay, fine. Boo. Okay, let's just keep watching boo. the movie. Move on. So now Lindsay is, like, complaining to Paige that, like, her, her family, th they do the same thing every year for Christmas, and it's just so boring. With my family, it's the exact same thing every year. And you know what? I agree, right? Like, fuck her loving family and their cute traditions. Bullshit, dude. Okay, so before we go any further into the movie's plot, I want to talk about something really quick about uh, the movie's release. So in this scene, you can see uh, Lindsay's parents are, are gay, okay? There's two gay men, two dads, and that's great, okay? More dads the merrier. I've always said that. But there is another movie called A Very Cool Christmas, and it's the exact same movie except for one aspect. A Very Cool Christmas features heterosexual parents instead of gay parents. The entire movie is the exact same. It's like shot for shot, it's the exact same, but every scene that has the parents, they had to film it twice. Once with the straight couple and once with the gay couple. So much work. Now, some of you have probably seen this on Twitter. That's actually how I found out about this movie. The tweet said that Too Cool for Christmas was intended to release uh, only in Canada because um, I guess Canadians are more like tolerant or whatever. <laughs> it's whatever. But yeah, Very Cool Christmas was intended for um, for the American audience, which was, which was more like conservative at the time, especially then back in 2004 when this was released. But after doing more research, I kind of, I, I found that that's not really 100% true. The director said that they worked uh, really closely with uh, a TV network, an LGBTQ plus network called Here TV. Um, so they developed the movie like for them, but it didn't have the budget as like a, like a lifetime or something like that. So, so they made the movie for Here TV, but so they could sell the movie to Lifetime, they just put in like a heterosexual couple because America, they, 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 were, they weren't as tolerant. So, I mean, it was kind of true, but not the whole Canadian American thing. But still, it's so weird to like think of the actors like finishing filming a scene and the director is just like, okay, cut, uh, dad sub out tap out for uh you do a little tag team just sub out for the mom okay good and we'll do the same thing one more time here we go so weird like imagine if they had to do that for every single movie that featured like a gay couple <laughs> i'm freaking out i can't believe we just hooked up out here in the mountains of wyoming i know neither can i well what are we gonna do well, considering we're man and woman, heterosexual couple, I don't think anyone really has any issues with us being together, so I actually think we're good. Oh. Oh yeah, well, I guess you're right. <laughs> well, that's great news. You bet your ass it is. Let's go hook up again. <laughs> All right. Brokeback Mountain, now airing on Lifetime for some reason. All right, uh, back to the movie. Well, Movies? Back to the movie. Back to it. So now we meet Lindsay's love interest, and his name is Anderson. And we find out that him 
his friend JT and his other friend Kevin are all going on the exact same ski trip as Lindsay and Paige. This is great, so are we. We leave on Christmas morning. So do we. <laughs> well, JT's gonna freak when I tell him that you're coming. He's been dying to hook up with you. <laughs> Jeez, buddy. <laughs> Is that like a normal thing to say? I don't know if it is. He's been dying to hook up with you. He wants to have sex with you so bad he keeps dying. He's dying to. I've had to, we've had to bring him back to life several times because he wants to hook up so bad. He keeps passing away. <laughs> so now Lindsay really wants to hit the slopes, dude. Now that Anderson's gonna be there, fuck. So she goes home and gives like a presentation to her mom and dad, or well, her dad and her dad, to her parents depending on which film you're watching. It's like a, it's like a presentation to, uh, to convince them to celebrate Christmas later on so she can go skiing. So in the presentation, she like roasts Santa Claus. A corporate creation in the tradition of Ronald McDonald and the Energizer Bunny. And then her little sister says this. Did Lindsay just say the Energizer Bunny isn't real? Has anyone ever thought the Energizer Bunny was real? Seriously, if you've ever thought that, please let me know. But if you have, sorry, newsflash, you're dumb. <laughs> sorry. It's like a weird fucking Easter thing. Like, yeah, wake up and the Energizer Bunny's gonna hide batteries around your house and you find them and then you eat them. Eat the fucking batteries and you die. There's so many parts in this movie that just say shit like that. And I'm like, is are you trying to be funny? Are you? Is it just pointless shit to say? Like, I don't... I don't get it. But after the presentation, obviously her parents get super mad at her and they tell her that she can't go skiing. You're not going. And that's final. They ask you how you are, you don't just have to say that you're fine. And you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Assholes. So Lindsay's really upset, so she goes to the mall to relieve some stress. She goes to a mall I mean in December to relieve stress. I don't know about you guys, but if you've ever been to a mall in December, uh, that's probably the most stress-inducing thing you could ever do. <laughs> but hey, what do I know, right? I'm not a stereotypical teenage girl in a movie written by fucking Michael Gilbert. So what do I know? Also, another quick little sidebar, Michael Gelbert, the uh, the writer of this movie, was also apparently a creative consultant on the uh, television show Radio Free Roscoe. And if you've ever seen that show, you fucking know how good it is. You know how fucking hard that show slaps. So this movie makes me extra mad. How, can, how could you consult creatively on such a great show and then make this? <laughs> okay, back to the flick. Oh, hey, it's Michael Gelbert. Wow, the guy we were just talking about. Yeah, <laughs> the writer of this movie plays a mall cop in this movie that he wrote. And let me just say right now, I want to spend as little amount of time as possible talking about this character because he makes me blood red mad. He makes me so upset, okay? He fucking sucks, okay? I'm sorry, but wow. Like, I know he's like the villain of this movie, you, you could say. And I know villains, like, you're supposed to hate them, but not this much. I hate when he's on screen, okay? I get... I get sick. Back away from the chicken stick, sir. But whenever he's on screen, I want to run. I want to sprint full speed. I want to fucking Naruto run into a, a fucking tornado. Do you know what this could do if lodged in the throat of an infant? Write him up, Donnie. Like, dude, his acting should stick to writing, dude. <laughs> okay, so the, he's like a power hungry mall cop. Um, and he hates teens. Man, I hate teenagers. And it seems like his only weakness, the only thing that makes him like stop fucking with people is when someone throws a hamburger at him. An unspoken respect. Who threw that? <laughs> I, I don't know, dude. So now we meet the mall Santa. Santa Claus, yay. He goes into this store to, uh, to buy an expensive suit but the employee thinks he can't afford it. So he kind of just like kicks him out. If you have to ask, you obviously can't afford to buy. Merry Christmas. Goodbye. 
And this scene may seem pointless right now, but I gotta, I have to reference it now so a later one makes sense. Oh, so just, so just wait a second. <laughs> and then we cut to a quick scene of the, the fucking stupid mall cop. Uh, he's talking to Lindsay and Paige. Um, and then they bring up some weird dating show he was on. <laughs> gotta be honest, right now she digs me a bit more. That's fine. Sometimes they're gonna like me more. Other times I'm gonna like them less. But yeah, I'll call Allison again. Go out? Again? <laughs> again. I don't know if that's supposed to be funny. I don't know why that's in the movie. <laughs> so after that, he's sitting on his little chair and he's ready to be Santa. And uh, Paige and Lindsay decide to go uh, see him to go sit on his lap and talk to the Santa. But they don't just go and like ask him for presents, you know, they don't do a normal thing. They, if they, they wait in line and then they sit there and just fucking fuck with him the whole time. They just make fun of him. Yeah, um, forgive us if we don't sit on your lap. Oh. Ew. <laughs> Not very nice thing to say. It's, it's Christmas. <laughs> At least I don't wear the same red suit every year. Tell me, Santa, how can Mrs. Claus stand to be married to someone so completely devoid of style. Like, holy shit, just so mean. That that poor old man, spreading hope and love to, to little kids and they're just like, hey, pervert, fuck you. You have no style, you get no pussy. <laughs> you are a loser. So they, I guess they sit there for a bit, they keep roasting him. You're inactive all but one day, Gary. You hang out with a bunch of elves. And then Lindsay pokes him in the stomach. And um, you sit around, put on the chubby glove. And then, and then, then after that, once she does that, then she feels bad. I'm sorry. Calling him a fat pervert was absolutely fine, but as soon as she poked his belly, yeah, that was fucked up. I'll say that. That was a little too far. So she goes back and uh, she apologizes to Santa. I just wanted to apologize for what I said before. And, and she asks if, uh, if there's anything that she can do to help him because she wants to stop feeling selfish. Maybe I can buy your wife a gift and you can give it to her. So I guess, so Santa in response to this is like, <laughs> I'm actually having really bad marital problems with Mrs. Claus. We used to be so close. We were like two lights on a Christmas tree. Every year those lists got longer and longer and the lights got further further apart. After all that, Lindsay agrees to uh, to help Santa Claus, and he's like, okay, great. So they go into this big montage of them working out so Santa can lose all of the weight that he has put on. Because even when Lindsay's trying to be nice to Santa, she's still a fucking dickhead, right? <laughs> like, oh, I know why your marriage is failing, because you're a fat loser and you're ugly, so I can fix that. Come along, stupid idiot fatty because <laughs> that doesn't even make sense like why would she do that right because in the flashback when they were happy together santa still looked like that right like he, he was he's always been like a jolly guy that's his thing so once the working out montage is done they go into another montage um and this one's a classic this one's a classic montage uh, it's, you know, the old, um, one person goes in to try a bunch of different outfits on, and then the other friend's like, no, I don't like that one. And they do another one, and then they're like, not that one either, come on. And then they put on, like, a regular outfit, and they're like, that's the one. <laughs> and they play this song during it where it's like, it starts by saying, Santa baby, so you think it's gonna be the song, Santa baby, but listen. Dude, imagine if when you're at when you're at the club and then like some guy's like, yo, DJ, play Santa Baby. <laughs> and then the DJ plays that. Dude, you get in so much trouble. Hey yo, DJ! Play Santa Baby! What? No, no way, dude. That's gonna kill the mood. No way. Play Santa Baby! No, I'm not playing Santa Baby. What the fuck? Oh, come on, DJ. I'll do anything. Here, have my life savings. Just please play Santa Baby. Your life savings is $3 and a Sharpie with no lid? Jesus, man. Okay, fine. I'll I'll play the song, okay? 
just keep keep your savings. So kind. <laughs> uh, okay. Wait, what the fuck is this? I'm sorry, man. This is the only Santa baby I have. I'm sorry. This is all wrong. This is all wrong. You gotta play the real Santa baby. Right, everyone? Yeah. Play the real Santa baby. 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 Play it. Play the real Santa baby. So once they find him a nice suit to wear, they go to a uh, hair salon and there's another montage. I'm not joking. They have three separate montages in a row. Hey, just make one. Oh my God, please just make one. Why do you need to do three? Here we go. We get to see what he finally looks like now. Senor Santa Claus. For an older man, you are hot. So now Santa is fuckable. And you know what? It's about time, okay? Ever since I was a wee lad, I was always just like, you know, Santa's great and all. I love how he gives me gifts, but I don't think he's that hot. Santa Claus is coming and his wife. <laughs> hey, talking about hot Santa just reminded me of something. Um, a few years ago, a mall in Toronto um, they had this whole like ad campaign with a sexy Santa and it was him like, you know, just like being hot, but being Santa. So they really made Too Cool for Christmas a real thing. That's fucking crazy, dude. That Santa probably leaves you on red and green. I did it! Okay, so Santa is sexy now, and this is my favorite scene in the whole movie. Let's watch it. Yet I came in a few weeks ago dressed in my Santa suit, and you laughed at me. Don't you believe it, Santa Claus? No. Big mistake. Huge. Take that, bitch. You just got pretty woman. I was in here yesterday. You wouldn't wait on me? Oh. You work on commission, right? Uh, yes. Big mistake. Big. Huge. My favorite scene, the only good scene in this whole movie, is an homage to a different movie. <laughs> oh man, that's so funny. Dude, picturing like one of those like, you know those gold digger pranks? Like, oh, you could have, but not now. That's basically what this is. But picturing that with like, Santa? Wow. Hey shoddy, what's good? You wanna, co you wanna come roll with me? Um, ew? No, sorry, I don't. Oh, you don't? <laughs> Okay, well, I guess I'll just take my sled pulled by <gasps> magical reindeer and I'll just fly out of here. No, oh, no, wait, wait. Now I want to. Sorry, babe. I don't hang out with coal diggers. No, come back. Ho, ho, ho. I'm not a ho, what the fuck? No, I didn't mean it like that. I'm sorry. Shit. Okay, so Santa and Lindsay, they leave the mall and Santa's like, oh yeah, it's Christmas Eve. We gotta deliver all the presents to every kid in the world now. And you gotta help me, Lindsay. I was hoping you'd come along with me. Uh, so Lindsay agrees, you know, for whatever reason. And then Santa goes on to explain all of his magical powers and how they work. How is it possible that gifts for every kid in the world fit in the back of my car? Two flips to the right ear and I shrink everything down. Oh. That is so cool. Different combinations of ear maneuvers cause different effects. Two flips on the right side shrinks presence. Exactly. Another example, if I were to pull my earlobe on the left side four times, I'd speak perfect Cantonese. <laughs> okay. I beg your pardon. Uh, well, that's... Whoa. <laughs> Ooh, wow. I don't know where to start with that. That's not even impressive, Santa, okay? Usually old white men are just blatantly offensive without doing anything to their ears. So that's just adding a step. Why would you write that into the movie? Holy shit. Hey, I'm an old man. And if I pull my right ear six times and my left ear three times, I get mad at a customer service worker just for trying their best and then I fall asleep on the couch at 4 p.m. <laughs> I'm Santa, and I suck.
<laughs> I didn't know they hired Neil Breen to do the fucking special effects for this movie. It literally looks like they're just driving in a huge car on top of a city. So Lindsay and Santa, they, uh, they travel the whole world, I guess, and deliver all the presents to the kids. And meanwhile, uh, the, the mall cop is like freaking out because he saw them drive away with a bunch of toys. So he was like, oh, black market toy ring. That, that's what they're doing. Someone's got some stolen merchandise. I don't know, movie stupid. Mall cop sucks. <laughs> Later on at night, they end up going to Anderson's house, the hot boy. They're like some form of genetically perfect superhumans. Almost as hot as Santa, but no one is. Good luck. Is it Anderson? Mm. <laughs> Dude, I don't know what it is. Um, like if I woke up in the middle of the night, like the night before Christmas, and I saw a big jolly man in a red suit, I'd be like, oh, okay, Santa's real. That's cool. I didn't, I, I was wrong, I guess. But if I woke up in the middle of the night to get a, a little drink, and I look over and I saw just like a, a man, an old, a, a golden brown man, and uh, he's just standing in a nice suit, I'd be like, hey man, I'm calling the cops, I think. You're not supposed to be here. You're supposed to be at a country club right now. Why are you in my living room? You hot, Hot old man, get out, of, get out of here. Okay, the movie's almost done. Jesus Christ. So before they leave Anderson's house, Santa puts in a little letter into, uh, into Anderson's stocking without telling Lindsay, uh-oh. And the last house they get to is Lindsay's house. And he's like, you gotta go, you gotta go deliver the presents by yourself. You expect me to go in there and take one look at my house and then I'll start thinking about my family and get all touchy and feeling and then not wanna go on the ski trip, right? Guilty as charged. But then she goes into her house and there's a big, this is the big turning point in the movie. Lindsay! Santa asked me to put your gift under the tree. You're my gift under the tree. What do you mean? I told Santa I wanted you home for Christmas. And you are. That's what you asked Santa for? Oh. <laughs> She was the gift all along. Wow. Oh wait, hold on. So she leaves. I didn't <laughs> I didn't notice that when I first watched it. She just she just left, dude. I wanted you home for Christmas. And here you are, right in front of me. Aw, oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> okay, bye. <clears throat> so they head back to the mall to say their goodbyes. But then the mall cop pops out of nowhere and they have a big confrontation, but Guess what fucking happens? It's a little something I like to call ban from the mall for life. <laughs> yeah, yep, some hoodlums throw hamburgers at him. Yo, that's so be cracking, dog. Huh. Thank you, dog. Oh, it's so good. Thanks for hooking me up with the burgers. I got your back, Claus. Yo, guys, this one's got ketchup! Hey! Go! Please! Allison? What the fuck is happening? Allison? I hate this movie so much. Uh, so it's Christmas day and Anderson shows up and he's like, I got your letter. I got your letter. Then they talk it out. They find out that they like each other. They smooch. I like you. I like you too. And they live happily ever after, I guess. So now finally, last scene of the movie, Santa goes home to the North Pole to Mrs. Claus to show off his new look. And big twist. Charlie, is that really you? Mrs. Claus got a makeover too. Now they're both hot. Seems as though we've gotten each other the same gift. Matching Christmas makeovers. Matching Christmas makeovers. Santa, baby, and my favorite song plays again. That it's clothes that make the man appealing to the missus. You better watch out for all those kids. So yeah, then the movie ends with a really, really passionate sex scene and it's full on nudity. Okay, <laughs> kidding. That's not, that's not true. So yeah. 
That's too cool for Christmas slash a very cool Christmas, depending on the the parents. Okay, so the whole two versions of the, the movie thing is very weird, but that, put all that aside, this movie sucks, okay? The selfish girl helps Santa get laid again because she poked his belly and felt bad. That's the synopsis. My God, I do not like that. But you know what? Until they release the movie about Mrs. Claus's makeover, I don't want to think about this movie ever again, okay? All in all, the Pretty Woman reference was pretty good. Yeah! Oh my God. Well, that movie was yucky, but you know what isn't yucky? Delicious food from HelloFresh. That's right, it's time to hear a word from today's sponsor, HelloFresh. If you don't know, HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. They send you easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy, dude. Me and my girlfriend, we love cooking together and HelloFresh has made that entire process even more enjoyable. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality, regardless of your comfort in the kitchen. HelloFresh has something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and Kraft Burgers. So no matter what your diet or preference is, there's a plan that's perfect for you. My absolute favorite thing about HelloFresh is how flexible and easy it is to use. Me and my girlfriend were just in Chicago last week and we weren't gonna be home to make any of the HelloFresh meals, obviously. But with just a few taps on the app, I skipped that week of meals and didn't have to worry about it. And if you wanna add extra meals to your order as well as yummy extras or dessert like garlic bread and cookie dough, you know, if you wanna make some cookies for hot Santa, it's just as easy. It all sounds great, right? HelloFresh sounds amazing, but what's super great is that HelloFresh is now from 566 per serving, making it America's best value meal kit. And HelloFresh is offering a hot and spicy deal for the citizens of Curtistown, okay? You can get started with nine free meals. That's $90 off your first month of HelloFresh, including shipping. All you have to do is go to hellofresh.com and enter code CURTISTOWN9, or just click the link in the description. And there you go, it's that easy, dude. Thank you for sponsoring the video, HelloFresh. Love you, bye-bye. All right, that's gonna do it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please like the video because one like equals one ear flip, okay? Let's try to get to 100,000 ear flips and we'll see what happens. We'll see what Santa does when we hit that number. Hopefully he'll be nice, but probably not. He will be hot though, I know that for sure. Leave a comment, let me know what you thought. Let me know what you thought of this movie. Um, and let me know any more recommendations you have for movies for me to watch and um, make fun of because it's a lot of fun and I like doing these. <laughs> also, don't forget to press the subscribe button because I make a video every single week and they're so much fun. And as soon as you press that subscribe button, you become a valued member of Curtis Town. If you've never heard of it, Curtis Town is the best place to live in the world. Uh, and I'm the mayor, so you have to be nice to me. It's the law. Yeah, you can check the description for all the other stuff that I do. Uh, my Instagram, my Twitter, you know, my weekly podcast called Very Really Good. There's a YouTube channel for that. I film all of them. It's a lot of fun. If you like my videos, you'll enjoy the podcast. Um, you know, I got merch, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, before we go, I want to uh, fucking thank all of you for my video last week that I did for an update on the whole Team Balls thing. We hit our goal of $10,000 to donate to um, Love is Respect. We hit, a, we hit our goal in like 12 hours. So uh, I just wanna say thank you to everyone who's donated, everyone who shared the video. Um, I appreciate it so much. And uh, yeah, that was really awesome for us to do. Uh, we did it, Curtis Town. That was fucking awesome, I'm proud of us. That was, that was cool. All right, I gotta go though. I gotta go throw a hamburger at that stupid mall cop. Goodbye.